Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for July 9th through 15th. This week I read two books, I watched three shows, I watched one movie, and I listened to two books. First this week we have Len and Cub, A Queer History. This is about two men growing up in New Brunswick in the early 20th century who we know from rumors and from photographic evidence that they were in a queer relationship. In fact, one of them was eventually run out of town for rumors that he was queer. His family was incredibly affluent, they were the first family in town to actually have a car, and he took photographs all throughout his life. Those ended up in albums, those ended up in an estate sale, and those ended up actually being in an archive, which is where the author of this book found them. They were also handed in with the information that him and one of the people that shows up in a lot of his photos were in a relationship at one point. This goes through as much of their life stories as possible because obviously this happened a very long time ago, neither of them are still around, as well as giving some background history of the area. I found this informative and really enjoyed seeing a lot of the photos throughout this book. Next I finished The Whisper on the Night Wind. This one is interesting because it's by this guy who basically goes on these long voyages by himself where he'll just, you know, canoe across the ocean or that type of stuff. I think that one in particular might have been the Arctic Sea. Anyway, he's done a lot of exploring around the world and he's done a lot of exploring through Canada as well. In this one he found some evidence in a very old journal that basically stated there was kind of a monstrous creature in a very small section of Labrador back in the 1930s and he decided, you know what, I should go see if I can find it. So he contacted a friend to go with him. The friend actually had the time to be able to do so and was also very outdoorsy and very fit. And they just drove 32 hours to get to where they would have to leave a vehicle, put their canoe together, and just set off into the wilderness of Labrador. I really enjoyed the writing in this one. He's telling you this story, but he's also giving historical context and bringing in all of these source materials that made him think that there might be something out there, and then also all these other theories about what it could possibly end up being. And that was really, really interesting to me. It also made me feel incredibly unfit because the things they went through to get from point A to point B, because it wasn't just as easy as like, oh, let's go for a nice paddle down this river. It was like, no, there were rapids, they had to like portage a bunch of times. There were times where they fell in holes, there were times where they were finding the excrement of very large creatures like bears, and I was just like, are you going to get attacked? I don't know. So as much as I have enjoyed camping in my time, I'm definitely not this hardcore. As for the shows we watched this week, we watched the last two episodes of The Last of Us, and um, yeah, I'm... Definitely looking forward to seeing how what was said at the end of that episode never comes back to bite anyone in the ass. She says with full sarcasm, because of course it is, and also this is a show about zombies, so the biting thing is interesting. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm not going to wreck anything for you. However, I did find it interesting that the voice actress who plays Ellie in the video game was actually featured in one of these episodes, which I thought was cool. I wouldn't have known it ahead of time. I, she did look very familiar to me, and I still don't really know why. I think she's just played, like, a character in a couple of shows, but, like, one-off characters. But I really enjoyed that they brought that into this adaptation. This week we also watched a couple of more episodes of Ted Lasso. I really enjoy the pace that we're going with this because I don't want it to be over and it's only getting the three seasons that they wanted it to get, so there will only be so much for me to watch. But it continues to be incredibly delightful and I think that this is one I'm going to end up re-watching in the future just because the characters are so lovely. I also completely caught up on the eighth season of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars because next week, or this week I guess now, is the finale and oh my goodness. I know I was trying to get a different favorite than my hometown girl Jimbo, but uh, four wins crown the clown. Honestly, it really comes down to what the finale is going to be because as we know her track record, she's not a great lip syncer, so she's going to have to pull out all of the tricks to win it, but she definitely could and I'm so excited for her. Not to mention this is the third season she's appeared on in the third country she's appeared in since 2020. She has been working her latex butt off. Since we finally finished The Last of Us, our roommate was like, now that you've seen him in that role, I need you to watch Pedro Pascal in a very different role. And I finally got to see what that gif of Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal is from, and that's the unbearable weight of massive talent. This is a movie in which Nicolas Cage plays himself. He is very much an actor, and he's trying to get another role, and he's deciding all of these dramatic things, like I'm going to quit acting, but he's getting paid really well 
to go to this random guy's birthday party. So he gets on the private jet, he goes there, he meets this guy. It turns out this guy actually has a movie script and he wants him to be in his movie. And eventually this just morphs into this very meta thing and I ended up really enjoying it. I really enjoyed that aspect of the storytelling in particular. I really enjoy that Nick Cage doesn't really give a crap anymore and just does whatever he thinks is going to be fun. As for the audiobooks I listened to this week, the first one was Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality. This is a short story collection and they're all horror stories and I don't know if I knew that going in but I was definitely very happy to find that out. Being a short story collection I can't really tell you too much with the exception of this takes place over several different centuries, it has several different types of characters and several different types of horror, and it takes place mainly in either China or or in Canada. Some of them might have been set in the States, but I know for a fact that the ones that are set in Vancouver, it's the Canadian Vancouver, because one of the stories is called Wreck Beach, and that's definitely in Vancouver. I've never been, but I've heard about it. So yeah, if you're looking for a decent horror anthology, I definitely suggest this one. The other book I listened to this week is The Witch's Heart. This one is steeped in Norse mythology, and I don't know that much about it besides what we know from Marvel films, to be honest. So I don't know if this is a character that existed in Norse mythology and was expounded upon or just completely made up. However, it's about this woman who had this ability that Odin really, really wanted, and once he found out that she was also giving that ability to other people or teaching other people that ability, he basically killed her three times by burning her in a fire and cut out her heart. However, one day Loki comes along and finds her heart and gives it back to her, and then she can live again, and she basically just lives this very solitary experience off in the middle of nowhere. She's got this really good friend that she sees every once in a while who basically barters her potions because she She's a witch and that's how she basically gets enough money to be able to make this cave a really nice home. And it goes from there. There's also some romance involved and then there's definitely some things that lead to Ragnarok, which is something we've all heard of because of Marvel films at the very least. Some people maybe have heard of Ragnarok prior to the Marvel films, but I am not one of those people. I got really worried at one part that this was going to be kind of like Cersei for me in that this is this one location where this character is set and people kind of come to her and things sort of have happened and Cersei in particular felt like a series of short stories to me and I never really knew when it was going to end whereas this one definitely had a through narrative even though it took place over lots and lots of different years and a lot of different things happened it definitely had this through narrative that I really really needed and I very much appreciated that. So if you know if Gulveig or Angraboda was an actual figure from Norse mythology please let me know because she went by both of these names depending on where she was in her story. There was also a third name near the end. I think it started with an H, but I honestly don't remember it and I don't think it matters. If you're looking for a mythology story, I very much enjoyed this one. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!